Hey, how's it going guys? Matt here from the Toasty Bros and I'm here with a build guide. In this build, we are gonna be doing a Ryzen 3 1200 base build and it's gonna be using a mixture of parts that you are able to buy today or find on the used market very easily. So without any further ado, let's get right into this build guide. All right guys, so as I mentioned, this build is focused around the Ryzen 3 1200. As you can see right here, we actually did a full review of the Ryzen 3 1200 and 1300X. If you hit the eye in the top right corner, you can check that video out as well. But today we're gonna be doing a full build featuring the graphics card that I actually used for most of the testing, a GeForce GTX 1050 Ti from EVGA. Now the graphics card that I link in the description down below with all the parts for this build is gonna be somewhat different. And some of the parts in this build are gonna be varying from the parts list down below mainly because the parts that I'm using are not really my most up-to-date recommendations. This case right here, which we'll get into once we get down to run down the whole part list, is really not the best price performance competitor out there, and there's a lot of better options. So I just use this case mainly because I had it on hand and I wanted to get this video out to you all as well, and it might look pretty cool. And if you want to spend more money on a really nice looking Ryzen 3 build, then you have this option. But I'll be leaving alternative links down below in the description for pretty much every single part around here so you can get the best price performance for your budget. As I mentioned, the parts that you're going to be getting for this build if you want a really awesome budget PC build is the Ryzen 3 1200, which comes in at $109. Its bigger brother, the 1300X, is a pretty awesome processor, but from my testing, I've realized if you overclock the snot out of this thing, even using the Wraith Stealth Cooler that was actually included free with this CPU when you buy it, you pretty much get similar performance and you save around 20 to 30 bucks based on your location. So this is gonna be the CPU of choice for the build. And as for the motherboard for that build, what we have right here is a Gigabyte AB350 Gaming 3. Now this is a $100 motherboard. It is a B350 motherboard. It's the best socket type, in my opinion, for a CPU like this, if you plan to overclock the snot out of it to get the closest as you can to the 1300X's performance. But there will be, again, alternatives in the description down below with the parts that will give you a more price-friendly option this is the motherboard that I have that I've been testing with all my AMD Ryzen stuff, and that was the main motherboard I had on hand for this build, so we're gonna include it in this build guide. But again, this is more of a concept to where I will give you a bunch of alternatives, and you'll be able to get similar performance from this build, mainly just some cosmetic and some upgrades here and there, some cost deficiencies, some stuff like that will be able to make this build more affordable for you all and change the price budget just a little bit. And as for the graphics card, the graphics card we went with is the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti from EVG. GA. This is honestly the only card that you can really buy right now with the whole Ethereum mining craze going on. And this card is a pretty awesome card with 4 gigabytes of VRAM. It can play most of your games at 1080p maxed out. And we're going to be testing a bunch of those popular titles like Players Unknown's Battleground, which is a new game we're adding to the list of benchmarks, Battlefield 1, CSGO, Overwatch, you name it. We're going to throw it at this PC and see what kind of numbers we can get. And this graphics card and this combination from my testing with the original benchmarks of Ryzen perform very well and you will see those later on in this video. As for the power supply, I went with this random Cooler Master 500 watt power supply that I've been using for benchmarks. It's really nothing special. It's an older power supply unit, but we'll get the job done for powering this system. But with the option I'm gonna be giving you because this is an older power supply and you really can't pick this up, I'm gonna recommend a 500 watt EVGA unit that just comes in really dirt cheap and you can get that as well. It's the same thing. Really don't need to worry about performance wise. Just pick that one up. I just didn't have that power supply on hand. So I grabbed whatever I had. And as long as it powers your system has a pretty decent efficiency rating for the wattage that you need for the system, then you should be fine. And this one does the job. It's older, but it works. And this is what we're gonna be using in this build. As for the storage for this build, what we're gonna be doing is mix matching a little bit of hardware that we have. Right here, I have a 500 gigabyte hard drive from System X. It's an IBM rated hard drive that we picked up on like a Craigslist ride a long time ago. We actually picked up six of them for a hundred bucks, which is a really good value. And it was hard drives that have been barely used and were used in like a server situation and they were upgrading their systems. And we did a bunch of smart tests on all these and they all work with flying colors. So we're gonna be using this as a storage hard drive for the games that we're going to be testing. And we also have a SanDisk SSD Plus 120 gigabyte SSD as a boot drive. This is an alternative. You don't have to purchase a boot drive for this build. If you're new to PC gaming, you really could survive on a hard drive if you want to save a good 60 bucks because SSD prices are kind of ridiculous right now. But you do have this option at hand if you want an SSD for those boot times and just overall great Windows user experience. 
Now the biggest thing on this table is the case. The case right here is the Entities AI Crystal Light. Now I picked up the light version while Entities sent it over to us for review a while back and was my case for my personal rig before I did my personal rig mod video. And we're gonna be using it in this video mainly because it's the only full ATX case that I have on hand right now that I haven't put in a build and or shipped out. I only have a micro ATX case that's sitting around, it's an old Cooler Master case. But this right here is the only one that doesn't have a system in it and it will look pretty cool when we get this build all together because it has red so it represents that whole Ryzen theme and it is a really nice case overall as I mentioned before at the beginning of this video this is a very expensive case for the money so I do not recommend you buy this one unless you really want to pony up the money for it because with the fans it's going to cost you roughly $130 and those are with just basic white LED fans the fans that are in here are AI halo fans from Anities as well and they're really really expensive for the value that you're actually getting so I would recommend the case I linked in the description description down below as well if you want something to fit the price performance budget that you want to aim for so just ignore this case but if you kind of fall in love with it like I did you might want to pony up the money for it so overall all these parts together if you were to buy them on Amazon right now would be roughly $700 which really again is not the best price for performance and this build as is right here would not be my recommendation all the parts down below would be the most up-to-date recommendation where you can get it probably roughly for 400 or 600 dollars and that would be the best price performance that you can really get right now with the whole graphics card mining craze because this graphics card the exact model i have right here is going for 180 dollars now but this one is probably the same as any other gtx 750 ti out there it cools the same this has only a single fan and you're going to get the best performance that you can with one that's cost roughly 150 bucks that's the best value that you can get right now for a 1050 ti and that's the one i'll link down below and i'll keep updated if you comment down below i'll make sure to get stuff updated but anyways now that we've run down all the parts and if you want to purchase yourself you can always check the link in the description down below but what we're going to do is put this system together do a little bit of a time lapse and then we're going to be transitioning into some benchmarks and final conclusions so let's get right into it
Alright guys, so the finished PC is right here and as far as performance numbers go, as you saw on the benchmarks, there were some concerns that I have and I want to address them at the end of this video. Now if you're going to be building a PC like this and you want to play games like Players Unknowns, Battlegrounds, or let's say GTA 5, well GTA 5 was okay, there are a couple other titles out there that are more CPU bound, you start seeing a lot of bottlenecking issue using the Ryzen 3 1200. Just how the architecture works for Ryzen, having only four cores without SMT really sh like hinders its performance in terms terms of single threaded applications and certain games like PUBG max out the CPU at 100% unless you drop the settings all the way down to very low which is what I had to do for the benchmarks. It looks like crap but you do get respectable results over around 80 to 90 FPS when you do so but you have to keep that in mind. If you're going to be playing a game like that that is very very CPU heavy you will have to drop the settings all the way down if you want to get an over 60 FPS experience. You could probably get away with low or medium but but at those settings I experienced a lot more stutter compared to very low. But all the other games like Overwatch and CSGO and Doom and all the other games that I tested performed flawlessly. It was 100 FPS, 60 plus FPS, at 1080p, pretty much max settings, high settings. Battlefield 1 was one of those games that really struggled as well. That was the game I was thinking of. Very CPU dependent and it really struggled at high settings. You could drop it down to medium, which I did and it kind of helped a little bit, but that's one of those games where you have to somewhat tweak some things a little bit because it was under 60 FPS at times and in certain high combat areas under operations game mode, the CPU just couldn't handle all the stuff that was going on on the screens. The Ryzen 3 1200 is great for somebody who wants to just jump into playing like esports titles like Overwatch and CSGO. But even then you can invest in something like an older platform like the i5 2400 or the i3s, the older i3s, and you can get similar performance in those esports titles. I just don't know where this lineup really lies and it kind of makes me question if I should recommend a system like this or if you should spend the little bit more money for the Ryzen 5 1400. That is ultimately up to you and I will leave both options in the description down below because you can go either way depending on what games you want to play and if you're okay with some of the setting adjustments that you have to make with the Ryzen 3 1200 then go with the Ryzen 3 1200. I even got it overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz and that was pretty easy using the included cooler but I was still kind of concerned with some of the results even with the 1050 Ti where the CPU was the bottleneck in some situations. So keep that in mind with what games you play on a regular basis or games you plan on trying and understand that you were paying $109 for an entry level CPU that you could upgrade in the future to something like a Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 on a B350 motherboard and get very awesome results. But know that if you're buying into this platform right now under the Ryzen 3 name, there are going to be some compromises made and if you want a no compromise experience, go for something like Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 and go with that or go to Intel and maybe buy like an i7 if you really want something super high end just for gaming. So that about wraps things up here guys. If you like this video, leave a like down below and comment what you think. If you have any suggestions or tweaks for this build guide, please let me know down below. If you aren't already, follow us on Twitter and join our Discord community for more content from the Toasty Bros and I hope to see you on the next one guys. Peace out.